This audio presentation of the Impersonal Life Chapter 15 Masters is brought to you by Christ Consciousness Channel. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Masters, you who are still holding to the idea taught in various teachings that I will provide a master or divine teacher for each aspirant towards union with me, hear my words. It is true I have permitted you in the past to delve into all kinds of mystical and occult books and teachings, encouraging your secret desire to acquire the powers necessary to attain this union, extolled in such teachings, even to the extent of quickening in you some slight consciousness of the possession of such powers. I have even permitted the belief that by practicing certain exercises, breathing in a certain way, and saying certain mantrams, you might attract to you a master from the unseen who would become your teacher and help you to prepare for certain initiations that would admit you into an advanced degree in some secret order in the inner planes of existence where much of my divine wisdom would be opened up to you. I have not only permitted these things, but if you can see it, it was I who led you to these books, inspired in you such desire, and caused such belief to find lodgment in your mind, but not for the purpose you imagine. Yes. I have brought you through all these teachings, desires, and beliefs, trying to point out to your human mind the forces I use to bring into expression my divine idea. I have portrayed these forces as heavenly hierarchies, and that your human intellect might the better comprehend, I pictured them as angels or divine beings, impersonal agents or executors of my will, engaged in the process of bringing into expression my idea that was in the beginning. But you did not understand. Your human intellect, enamored of the possibility of meeting and communing with one of these beings, as claimed in some of the teachings, proceeded at once to personalize them and began to long for their appearance in your life, imagining that they are interested in your human affairs and that by living in accordance with certain rules set down in certain teachings, you could propitiate them so they would help you to gain nirvana or immortality. Now I have purposely permitted you to indulge yourself with such delusions, letting you long and pray and strive earnestly to obey all the instructions given, even leading you on sometimes by giving you glimpses in self-induced visions and dreams of ideal beings, which I permitted you to believe were such masters. I may even have caused to open in you certain faculties, which make it possible for you to sense the presence of personalities that have passed into the spirit side of life and who have been attracted by your desires and seek to fulfill the part of master and guide to you. Now the time has come for you to know that such beings are not masters, also that divine beings do not call themselves masters, that I and I alone, your own real self, am the only master for you now, and until you are able to know me also in your brother, that any being either in human or spirit form that presents himself to your consciousness and claims to be a master, or who permits you to call him master, is nothing more nor less than a personality, the same as yours, and therefore is not divine, as your human mind understands that term, despite the many wonderful truths he may utter, and the marvelous things he may do. Just so long as your human mind seeks or worships the idea of a master in any other being, no matter how lofty or sacred he may seem to you, just so long will you be fed with such ideas, until verily I may perhaps permit you to meet and commune with such a master. If that privilege is vouchsafed you, it will be only in order to hasten your awakening and your consequent disillusionment, when you will learn that master is indeed but a personality, even though far more advanced in awakening than you, but still a personality and not the divine one your innermost soul is yearning for you to know. For I feed you with every idea that will operate to teach you the reality back of the seeming, and if I lead you on to apparent deception and loss of faith in all human teachings and in all human and even divine perfection, it is only to enable you the more clearly to distinguish between the substance and the shadow and to prepare you for that far higher ideal I am waiting to picture to you. You can rise in your human personality only to the ideal your human mind is capable of conceiving. Through desire I cause my will to manifest in you, and through desire I perform many wondrous works. If you doubt this, you need only to apply the key. To think of a master is to create one. This idea of a master by your thinking becomes what you desire and imagine a master to be.
In other words, by your thinking you build around this idea all the qualities you imagine a master possesses. Your human mind, through desire, through aspiration, through worship, must needs create these qualities in some imaginary being who is still a personality, for you cannot as yet conceive of an impersonal being. Therefore, according to the intensity of your desire and thinking, must this idea sooner or later come into actual manifestation, either by attracting to you such a personality in the flesh, or one entitized in the realm of visions and dreams. As your human mind is constituted, it at certain times thinks it needs a master, one to whom it can turn with its human trials and problems for explanation and advice, thinking life's problems can be settled that way. If I draw to you one who fails you or deceives you and throws you back finally upon me, your own self, discouraged, disillusioned, and humiliated, it is only that perhaps then you will be ready to turn to me within and will listen to my voice, which all these years has been speaking to you, but to which your proud and egoistic mind has not deigned to listen. You who have not yet had this experience, who have not yet met the master of your aspirations, either in human or spirit form, You within whom my words have failed to awaken a quickening response to their truth. For you I have in store certain experiences which will surely lead you to me later on, and then you will be brought to know that I am the Master, the inspiring idea back of and within every thought of and every aspiration towards a Master that enters your mind, whether coming from within or without. It is taught, when the pupil is ready, the Master appears. And this is true, in a sense but not as you have interpreted it. Your secret desire for a master will bring him to you, but only when I have prepared you for such appearance. But such appearance will be only an appearance of a master. The true master or teacher, when he appears, you may never recognize, for he may be hidden in an interesting friend, a business associate, your next-door neighbor, or in your own wife or husband or child. You, who have risen above desire, you who no longer seek a master or a teacher, or even me, but are abiding alone in the faith of my eternal presence and promise. For you I have in store a meeting and a communion, which will bring to your soul such joy and blessings as your human mind is incapable of conceiving. Now this is a mystery, and until you can comprehend it, you are justified in claiming the above as not consistent with certain statements herein, and as contradicting teachings in my other revelations. Fear not, this mystery will be revealed unto you, if you truly wish to know my meaning. Until then, why, in your seeking, be satisfied with anything short of the highest? Why seek in human or spirit teacher, guide, master, or angel for the necessarily limited manifestation of my perfection, when you can come directly to me, God within you, the omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, the inspiring idea back of and within all manifestations? As I am in you, Even as I am in any you seek, and as all the wisdom, all the power, and all the love they possess come only from me, why not now come to me, and let me prepare you also so I can express my all through you? You are a human personality, yet you are divine and therefore perfect. The first of these truths you believe, the latter you do not believe, yet both are true. That is the mystery. You are just what you think you are. One or the other, which are you? or both, you are one with me. I am in you, in your human personality, in your body, mind, and intellect. I am in every cell of your body, in every attribute of your mind, in every faculty of your intellect. I am the soul, the active principle of each. You are in me. You are a cell of my body. You are an attribute of my mind. You are a faculty of my intellect. You are a part of me, yet you are I, myself. We are one, and always have been. This idea of a master I brought to your mind's attention was only to lead you to and prepare you for this idea of me, your impersonal self, an angel of light, a radiation of my being, your own divine lord and master within. Yes, I, your divine self, am the master your soul has caused you to seek, and when you do find me, and know I am yourself, then will you in your human consciousness gladly become my disciple, will lovingly wait upon me, and will be concerned only that you faithfully serve me, both within yourself and within your fellow men. And then will you understand why only one is your master, even Christ.
For I as the Christ dwell in all men, and am their one and only self. Through all men I am ever calling to you and trying to reach and impress your human consciousness. As I am continually teaching you, not only through all men but through every avenue needed at the time, I have many ways of reaching your consciousness, and utilize all to bring you to a realization of my meaning. I speak with many voices, with the voice of all human emotions, passions, and desires. I speak with nature's voice, with the voice of experience, even with the voice of human knowledge. Yes, these are all my voice, which I use impersonally to express to you the one fact that I am in all and that I am all. What this voice says, in its thousand ways, is that you too are part of this all, and that I am in you, waiting for your recognition of me and your conscious cooperation in the expression of my idea of impersonal perfection on earth, even as it is expressing in heaven. When this recognition comes, and then only, are you ready to meet and know a real master? Then and then only will you realize why I, your own impersonal self, can be and am the only possible master of your human personality. Then also will you understand why in your personal separate consciousness, you could never recognize or know a real master should you meet him in a physical body. That not until you are able to enter into your Christ consciousness, my consciousness within you and within him, he would not exist to you other than perhaps as a kind and helpful friend or teacher. When you have attained to that consciousness, then only will you be worthy and qualified to know and commune with your fellows in the great brotherhood of the Spirit, those who have mastered self and who live only to help their younger brothers also to find the Divine One within. If a being should come into your life who seemed to you divine and who let you think or call him a master, he is not yet wholly impersonal. Such a one might be a master man, but he would not be the divine one your soul yearns to serve. Perhaps you would be satisfied to have such a one for a master, even if he were not wholly impersonal. If so, then I would hereafter bring you to a realization of his personal imperfections by a constant comparison with my impersonal perfection, until you would finally turn and come to me in complete abandon acknowledging me and my impersonality as the only model and ideal and as the true cause which inspired your long search without for my perfection that could be found only within, hidden deep within your own soul.